All right. So yeah, the way we're going to do this video is, um, so we're going to go through a few VODs. So you're a plat one, you finished, uh, so you at the moment you're plat one, um, uh, plat yeah. one mid main and you were previously jungle, but you've kind of swapped to, to mid lane. Um, so what we're going to do, I've watched a bunch of your VODs and we're going to go pro hopefully try and get through three. Okay. All right. So three, and we're going to go th and the main things we're going to be looking at, we're going to be looking at micro. We're going to be looking at lane intention, and then we're going to be looking about how to actually push your leads in games. So we're going to start, um, and at the end, what we're going to do is tie, um, tie this all together to actually set some learning objectives for you. All right. Yeah. So let me just swap my scene here. So what I'm going to do, can, can you see my screen all good? Like, it's okay. Uh, yeah. So what we're going to do this, I don't know if you remember this game. This is like one uh, of the most recent ones. Yeah. Yeah. So this was really, really interesting, and um, I actually would have won this game. Oh yeah, this a lot of the games you've played recently are so winnable. Yeah, like super, super winnable. So what I'm gonna do is just disable this chat here. I'm gonna fast forward a little bit to the landing phase. So this was when you know you guys did that weird invade. So you got you've actually popped um, one of your pots already. So let me swap your vision on right here. All right. So straight away. Um, Let's talk about the matchup. So, you know, obviously heading into every game, you need to be breaking down the matchup in terms of... So, um, the way I like to view it is, okay, your champion as Syndra has a very specific identity, right? So, she is an extreme lane bully and she wants to be able to push her lead through lane. If you're ever going even in lane as Syndra, um, you're pretty much losing, right? So, um, in terms of the jungle matchup, you have an Echo and you're versing a Warwick. Warwick's ganks aren't too strong in the early game, so it's not mu too much to worry about. But why this is important is because, let's just say you're versing, obviously, like a Lee Sin or a Jarvan or an Elise. It's going to be a lot harder for you to punish um, War uh, Vega in lane, especially since there's so much kill threat onto you. The first thing, and so what do you think about Ignite versus Cleanse? Personally, I think, given you're versing a Warwick... I think taking Ignite's fine, since I don't think there's much kill threat onto you if you guys have river control. But if you were versing like a stronger jungler, I think honestly taking cleanse is more important. Yeah, I had to burn my flash at the start because I didn't have a cleanse. Yeah, we'll talk about that. There's a reason yeah. why that actually happened. All right, so let's get into the landing phase. So if one thing I like to do already is notice how you've already auto attacked the minion. I like getting the minion advantage in matchups where you want to abuse early, like this. So this is the same this when you've been really weird. Okay, well, yeah. <laughs> you missed the first thing. That's not that's not a big deal. But um, the but more the most important thing is that you've gotten a minion advantage, and this is going to allow you um to to make it easier to poke right because then Vega is going to have to make a choice between hitting the minions and hitting you. Does that make sense? Yep. All right, cool. You get a nice little bit of poke off, auto attack, you proc your electrocute, and I think you get a Q on the back end here. Things are looking really good so far. You've got a um, got a nice little advantage here. So one thing you should be doing is already popping your pot here and then looking to kind of pressure advantage. You actually played this quite well. You're level two, you got your level two first, bang, EQ, auto attack on the back end, looking really, really good. So your level one and two were, were very good here. You poked. You've got the minion advantage and you decided to get this wave in, which I think was very smart because look at this. The next wave is coming um, is coming in. So you've got the whole wave in. Beautiful. Bang. So you get another ward down so you can lean onto one side. Nice. First thing here, we're going to get into the very the nitty gritty here. One of the habits that I've seen you kind of uh, develop is you don't time your cues when he goes up to CS. Yeah. So look at this. So already, you know, you, you, you're quite safe to be able to walk up and poke here. He's going to look to use his Q or look to stop at some point to, to potentially CS his minions. So here, he see how you're not timing your Q? You walk up and Q when the minions aren't low. So then, you know, you miss the Q there. So there's something little. Now, this is the very, very, this is where we get, this is the, the absolute, I would say the biggest thing we need to work on together is setting your lane intention. So you get the lane in, great. What does this mean now? So this means obviously it's going to start to slow push to you, which is which is actually what you want, because at the moment, or at least keep it in the middle. If you want to punish this guy, it's so hard to do it from this position, right? Like yeah. it's right outside the tower. So what you actually do is you That's actually keep touch, you keep poking, you keep yeah. hitting the the mini wave like this, 
And notice how, look how hard it is, or how easy it is, sorry, to Vagar to just sit here and farm safely. It's very difficult for you now to walk past the minion wave and poke this Vagar. Um, and right now, the, the problem with this as well is that, um, yeah, you're not going to be able to push your lead. So if you were to let this wave come out and kind of bring it a little bit more in the middle, you're actually going to get to the point where you're going to be able to walk past the minion wave and abuse... Um, abuse your early strength on this Vega, and you can't do it from this position. So rather than looking this, looking at it in this specific um, moment, the way, it's like a generalized thing and an overall a skill that you need to develop. And we'll go through, this is going to be one of the key um, fundamental things that we actually go through in this coaching session is you always need to have an intention with every single wave. Otherwise, this sort, this sort of thing happens where you, people's default response is to hit the wave. And so here you're just hitting the wave... And now you're just in such an awkward position. Like, look, look how hard it is. There's really not much you can can do right now. You're scared to walk up. And especially if he goes for a stun now, I mean, if Warwick's in river, which, you know, most likely not yet, um, you know, you, it's just very difficult. So that's the first thing here. And like he does, look, look at this. Yeah, Warwick shows. Um, you have to blow your flash because he can just land a stun and you're so deep in the lane. Um, you you kind of get screwed here. So this is why, just going back one more time, I actually, I actually forgot Warwick actually ganked this early, but look at this. Because of your positioning in the lane, there's so much time. Um, yeah, so much time he has to be able to get the stun down. So, does that, does that make sense so far? Yeah. I just thought since I had the wood down, I could just mm. play up, but... Yeah. I think, I, I think, again, this ties into just your... Yeah, it is a bit of a weird gank, like Warwick. Like, he hasn't... Like, he's just done three camp. Wait, how many? Holy shit, he clears so fast. Um, It is a bit of a strange gank, but it makes sense because you're nearing three minutes. So, junglers can generally be active. But you you know this, you're a jungler, right? Between 240 yeah. and three minutes. So, like, that can happen. But, again, my main point is just the wave positioning. So, anyway, you base. You come back. This is very important. You get it. Uh, what do you buy? You buy a dark seal and a health pot here. We're not going to go too much into itemization in this specific, um, in this specific coaching session because I think there's so much we need to cover in terms of content, in terms of uh, yeah. actual gameplay. Like we can do, like we can talk about um, itemization in a separate conversation after this, like in in Discord or something like that. Yeah. So what do we know right now? We know that Warwick most likely is on topside scuttle, correct? Um, yeah. Echoes just died, so we we, we 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 can safely assume that Warwick's on top side here. Nice. So you get and you you walk up here and you get a nice little ward in top river because you know most likely Warwick's on top side. Then Warwick shows here, so this is fine. And it looks like you're beginning now to slow push, perfectly fine as well. And then again, Warwick shows top. So every single time. The jungler shows it should be ringing alarm bells in your mind. So what does that mean for you? Well, it means that you, you're in an isolated 1v1. So that should directly um, influence how you want to play the lane. So now you need to, you can actually get in his face. And now look at this. You have, you have the minion advantage like this because your cannon creep's still up and he doesn't have a cannon creep. There's no reason for you now not to be getting up in his face. So what I would be doing is positioning on the other side of this cannon um, and actually looking to really, really get in his face. So his um, Baleful Strike is on a six second cooldown and yours is on a four second cooldown. But the main point of this is that you're going to be forcing Vega to play this chaotic laning phase, which falls straight into Syndra's identity as a champion. If you were to just sit here and scale, uh, you know, scale up, Vagar's going to be stacking his Q on minion waves. The, you're not really achieving what you want to in this specific lane phase. And look at this, how this plays out. Look how defensive you're playing at the moment. Yeah. So you, you see this? There's there's no yeah. punish him. There's no... There's two things we're missing here. We're missing, obviously, the position. You can just position on the bot side of the lane here, um, being really, really aggressive. You can even... You know how we talk about... Uh, if you've watched my previous videos, we talk about holding E, holding your Syndra E and not using it yeah. too much. You can actually just straight up use your E here. Like, you can use it aggressively knowing that Warwick wasn't in this area. You can do a full combo, Q, E, W, bang, auto attack. And you know you can do this as well because you have the minion advantage, right? So you can just walk up past it. Yeah. Um, 
And you should be poking him for every single minion he goes up for as well here. So it's just very, very defensive. And again, this ties into having an attention, having intention with your wave and then having an intention and understanding the lane identity of your specific matchup here. And this is very, you know, maybe completely different if you're versing, you know, maybe Syndra versus like Fizz or Echo or something. It's going to be completely different. But since you're versing these immobile mages that really want to scale up, you need to put the pressure on. Leaning onto the bot side here. Let's get the next page. So... Keep going forward. All right. Okay, this is, and you actually do this a little bit better than last time. So you push the wave in, which means it's going to be coming back out to you right now. So what does this mean? Warwick, um, we still don't know where Warwick is. We can maybe assume that he's going to be back onto his bot side, right? So he's made a play top. Yeah. He needs to be back onto his bot side camp. So that's what I'd be thinking anyway right now. And now the way it's coming out to you, it's doing a really good spot. Now look at this. Bang. What do we see? Warwick shows top again. And then what you should instantly do as a habit is say, okay, look at the items. He still hasn't recalled. So what does this mean for you? This means that he st he's going to reset very soon. He's probably going to catch his wave and reset, and then he's going to go straight back onto his bot side. So what does that mean for your laning phase? It means he's going to be an isolated 1v1, right? Yeah. Which means you are free to absolutely abuse this guy as much as you want. And um, so it means you can get in his face. It means you can use your E freely. It means you can basically um, slam your face into this guy. And... Um, now look at this. So you're letting it come out into a good position. Although I think you should already be walking up and playing way more aggressive here, looking to get poke. And why do I recommend it as well? Looking for poke is because you're, you're also a really good habit to get into is you're either doing two things right now. You're either going to be looking to push and look for a reset if you need a specific item, or you're going to be um, looking to get damage, start poking in with Qs, knowing that you're you're going to hit level 6 quite soon, and then look for an all-in with ult and ignite, right? So yeah. you, you need to have this. This is why, why having the intention is so important, because if, like what you're doing right now, nothing is actually happening. There's no advantage being accrued right now. You're just, you're just kind of just going with the flow at the moment, using your Q max range on minions, playing quite defensively. And then you get this first great trade of the lane. Look at that, bang. You get a quarter of his health, or even more than a quarter of his health, and you could have done this ages ago. Look at that. You did this amazing trade. Bang. He's in such a shit position. You're heading towards six. You're halfway there. You could be constantly looking to poke cues on him. Um, all right. So, and there, the other, another little habit there. See how he walked out of vision here? You should also get oh, in the habit man. of pinging him. I don't have the ping on this account. Ah. The areas were did. Ah, no problem. All right, now, 545, what do we, but what do we see, and what do we see right now? So you've got this little bit of poke off, you, you know that Warwick most likely is basing, going onto his bot side. What does this mean for you? You've got 800 gold, he has teleport, and you have ignite. You either need to, be, you need to be very decisive at this point, and, and, and I'm going to be talking, and why I'm talking so much about um, lane intention, wave intention, what, what was your first name, by the way? Um, John. John. <laughs> Sorry, I should have asked that at the start. I was like, what do I call you? I don't want to call you Neutronics. It sounds like you're a robot or something. Um, John. So, Syndra is a champion that... Um, so, he really needs... If, if you don't have intention with waves, like like I said, you're going to get outscaled and you get really, really punished for playing defensively. So, I think that... like, And, and the thing with you, John, is that you actually have good mechanics because you're obviously previously a Diamond 1 player that you have decent mechanics, your micro is really good. If you can tie up, like, tighten all these things, really have intention with your matchups, you are going to be getting such insane leads in your games that it's going to be ridiculous. And look at and, and now look what happens in this specific moment because you don't have an intention. Well, actually, before we get into this, what do you think you should be doing right now? Out of interest. Um, uh, what's my XP bar? You are nearly six. Um... Going for poke and trying to get a solo kill and lean top side because it's probably going to be bot side soon. Yeah, and that I think that's pretty fair. I think I think that's. I a... can I can probably get a stun on him and then just shove him out of lane and get a better reset and get my lost chapter. Brilliant. 
I didn't know what I did to her. So, so okay, that that's that that makes a lot of sense to me. But all right, so the way I saw this whole thing was okay. See, so see how you notice you're still playing very defensively, obviously. But the main problem I see is that the longer this laning phase goes without you either looking for a kill or looking to push and reset, you're just going to be completely screwed because he's going to he's his Warwick's coming back on the map, who's quite going to be quite strong, got his team at. And then you don't have flash anymore. You're going to have to respect. He's going to have full control over the wave and he's just going to be able to TP back and just completely destroy you. So look what happens as a result of not really having an intention here. Oh, and by the way, with his Qs like this, um, like again there, notice how the timing of the Q was off. It's because um, when I was first learning mid lane, I was on like a fresh account and I could just spam Q because they were all bad. <laughs> right. To a really bad habit. Yeah, so it's the same thing over and over again. And now, because, look, you haven't had that intention with what you're doing, Vega actually has, like, a minion advantage. Warwick's heading into River. Your Echo had just based and is going bot. Like, you're you're in such a bad position right now. Like, notice how rough your position is right now. You, you're scared to shove the wave out. You can't go for an all-in anymore. You He actually has the minion advantage. He has teleport, and you don't have flash. Look at that. Look how bad this position is. And this is all, if we're going to go back, this is all from failing to have an intention all the way back here. This is like a minute ago. So in League of Legends, it's all a minute ago, like ages ago. This is, you, you set up, it's all the little things that add up to create a favorable position. And then like here, this whole time you should be looking to set up kill threat onto this guy, knowing that Warwick's not, in, not on the map yet, knowing your jungler's still on the map. You should be playing aggressive, aggressive. As soon as you see your jungler reset, you see Warwick go out of vision, you already know in your mind you're on a timer right now. You have to make something happen, either slow push, and because you don't have pink wards, you don't have any way of defending yourself, you don't have flash, you either need to be looking to go for a kill, or slow pushing and resetting. You need to do something. So this, this all makes sense. Yeah, it's just like, before as a jungler, I could track the enemy jungler, but since I'm a mid lane, not like, I just... It's hard for me to keep track because gotcha. I'm focusing on my own lane. So when I don't see the jungle for a while, I just assume he could be mid. Yeah, I mean, I think yeah. that's yeah, I think that's a good habit. And he, and he was like, look at it, looking at this. He went to his bot side. He cleared his gromp, went straight into river, and now he's looking at you, knowing that you like, don't have. When when he was top side, I didn't think that he would need to reset and stuff. Like I would uh... just like ten seconds later, I would have just assumed that he could be mid lane. Right, but did you look at his items? No, I don't, I don't think so. Okay. Well, yeah. That's actually interesting because, yeah, I mean, um, when I saw Warwick's items before, where was it? Here. I mean, and like, it's, if you just panned your camera, looked at his HP, look at his items, you can pretty safely assume that he's going to recall, right? Yeah. So, yeah, like, I, that makes sense, though, because then you don't know, because you haven't processed that bit of information. You're probably playing now as if his top side or could potentially be on his Raptors or something. And you're just kind of scared to push yeah. a lead is what, I, is what I'm hearing. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, it is really important, I guess, to, to assess that information. Cause if, let's just say he didn't show top right before. And instead of catching that top wave, he just reset, went straight back onto his bot side. I understand the way you were playing. Then I probably would have just played to slow push the wave and reset. Like either way, like I probably yeah I could have just even if I didn't know where he was I probably could have just leaned bot side and still punished him because we had vision everywhere. Well, the only problem with that, John, is that um, no, I was just like I didn't have flash, so I was playing a bit more safe. Well, okay, like let's let's bring this back to like the identity of Syndra. Like you at this point, let's just say Warwick instead of showing top here was um re he reset right. And you're saying you could just continue to stay in lane and push. The problem with that is that you don't have any pink wards. This lane's going to get extended. Vegas is going to continue to farm and then have TP. And you're never going to have control in this lane. Like, I don't think you're ever going to be... Like, even if you were to lean bot, you don't have any wards. You've used both your wards. You don't have any pink wards. And, um, like, you're not going to have the ability to push your lead against this Vega. If I were you, even if I didn't know where Vega was, I would probably still either poke and slow push at the same time, like you're doing now, but just continue to hit the wave and then reset, come back with at least a pink ward, maybe even a, um, 
you know, a Null Magic Mantle or a Tier 1 Boots or something, or even at, like, uh, an Amber Flying Tomb, whatever, as long as you have a Pink Ward, then you can come out of base, come back safely, Pink Ward one side, and then Heavy Lean, and then continue to put your poke on. But I just don't see how you, even if you stayed in this lane and you didn't recall, like, like we fast forward here, like, it's pretty much what you do. And then Warwick shows here. He's going straight into Bot River. You don't have any wards. You don't have any pink wards. It's so hard for you to operate at this point. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So now, now you're in a really, really rough spot. And, and what this does, John, look at this. Because of you not basing earlier and not really doing anything in your lane, the lead actually snowballs into the rest of the map. Now, Warwick is free to walk into the jungle. And now what happens? Vagar is able to play aggressively. He's able to get a full wave in. Now your jungler's getting invaded on by your mid laner and jungler. He gets his red taken. He actually dies in the jungle here. And you're, you can't even respond. And now everyone's and, and imagine if before you'd reset, put a ward there, you'd seen Warwick, you'd be able to shove Vega out. This game is completely different. So I think like yeah. I see a lot of Koreans and they just take like quick bases to get like item spikes whereas mm. i i think i save up my gold too much and mm. i like wait for my lost chapter or something i only base with big items i think i mean i wouldn't worry too much about that like because i don't think that's replicable in terms of like behavior change i think you need to understand why you need to base when you do because i think the reason they base when they do is because it's like they know there's no point. It's like they 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 really understand their identity of how they want to play out their lane. Like for example, Syndra in Korea versus Vega wouldn't be in like that would be basing for refillables. That would be basing for amp tombs, not because they can, but because it's favorable for the way they want to play the matchup. Like imagine if you're playing Vega and this Syndra plays like a psycho, constantly makes you base, use your TP, stops you from just getting all this CS safely. It's going to be so much harder for Vega to operate in this game because this is like it ties into what you you want you what you want to be doing in Korea. If someone's going to be playing Victor, they don't want to be doing that. They don't want to be constantly basing. That generally because Koreans at high elo play very aggressive champions. They're heavy trading and resetting, and you can you should be doing that because it's coherent with the style of your champion. If that makes sense, does that does does that yeah. does that make sense? Yeah. So I think like think of it rather than overall as a generalized concept. Think of it in terms of just like your specific matchup, what you want to do within that matchup. So anyway, let's fast forward a little bit. Your jungle gets invaded. He dies. At least a dragon. You get this wave out. Then you decide to recall. So you do that. So swapping to to sweeper. I think this is really really bad. You have this habit of swapping all the time. Oh, I, I was Joe you know Tempest, the jungler. Yeah. Yeah. So I was doing with him, and he said it's like on Syndra you can just get sweeper and stack balls and go for a one shot or something. And he also <laughs> said if you have mid, like if you if your jungler has yellow trinket, you should swap to the red trinket. Nah, it's it's you should really... always have at least one red trinket. Nah, it's really bad. It's really bad. So the reason that's really bad is because, all right, so, um. Syndra as a champion needs to be able to heavy lean to one side. And if you don't have trinket, it makes it very hard. Yes, you have a pink ward, but sometimes that's not enough. Like, let's just say you come back to lane, you have a pink ward, you pink this dot brush. You can also yellow trinket these raptors. So any champion that gets insane priority has to have yellow trinket. I think it's crazy not to have yellow trinket because you're already most likely like, okay, Let's just say, um, what would you rather more? Would you rather see their jungler, what side of the map they're on? Or would you rather stop the the Vega from knowing how far in the river you are? Vega's not going to chase uh, you into the river anyway. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, if you walk into Duck Out of Vision, yes, you may be able to sweep a ward that's sitting in the side brush. It's not going to actually change anything because... The, 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 the power in Syndra's move is not the fact that you're camping a brush. It's the fact that you're out of vision. You can just move up further ne near your pink ward where you know it's not already swept, where you already know it's it's clean. So, like, it doesn't actually change the behavior of the enemy. It, it, it matters so much more by using your priority to get deep vision than it, it because that's going to allow two things. It's going to free up your everyone on the rest of the map to be able to play aggressively it's going to allow you to push your limits and it's going to be, allow you to be able to heavy lean to one side and use your priority to potentially set up an invade on a buff because you're going to see them in the jungle as well like 
trinkets on champions that get that get it is super op the only reason i would get sweeper on a mid laner is if you were doing it for the for the vision tr the vision thing i don't even know if that's actually been buffed or nerfed sorry you know where you you swap yeah. to sweeper i'm oh, actually not cool down yeah i'm actually not sure if that's been changed or not i don't think it's been changed yeah, okay yeah my tempest still does it every game okay like, well yeah then. that's the only reason i'd do it Okay, so now um, you come back, you hard sharp to be able to get some vision out, which is very smart. That's what you want to be doing straight away. You want to be hard pushing, getting vision down um, rather than slow pushing because it gives you an opportunity to deny some CS, get some vision down. Then you lean in between the waves to potentially go for a kill, sweep some vision, whatever. Bang, you come back mid, completely fine. You should 100% be taking this blue, by the way. Oh, he didn't let me. I asked him in chat. And oh. was like... Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit rough. Uh, all right. And by the way, think of it, that, that last room, by the way. Imagine if you were to get a deep ward up here on these raptors. Yeah. Like, that's so valuable to me. I think that's so valuable. All right. So, fast forwarding a little bit here. You're back in lane. Get an okay, you know, pretty good trade there. Nice. All right, so you see Warwick and Top River here. Fast forward this a bit. You know, Warwick's probably going to be top side here. What do you do? Okay, now, this, this is what was interesting here. You get the wave. And the great thing about this, you get this wave because you're assuming Vagar's most likely based. Your next wave is actually a cannon wave. Right now, you see this. This is your screen. You see Warwick on Krugs. You see Soraka under tower. You should 100%. Who cares about this? This is what I'm talking about. You saw this ward with Sweeper. Look at their vision. It's the power of you already being out of vision is what matters. Now, when you come back, you waste time turning back. Like, you go here. You turn around. Continue to sweep this. And then you do nothing with your roam. What you need to do, and what I, I recommend a good habit to get into, is when you roam, just keep your camera panned. Keep walking, keep walking, keep walking. The next wave's not even in the lane, and it's a cannon wave. You can use this time to just chill here. I would literally just sit here on near this blast cone or just in front of this red, then because assess whether or not you need them for the dive. Maybe you backed up thinking that you don't, you're not needed for the dive, but you do, you did know that Warwick was in the area. There is no harm in just sitting here and using this time to constantly assess the situation. And now what happens? Warwick shows you could have just been blasting over on this blast yeah. cone and actually helping this dive and turn it into a four v two rather than a one v three, one uh, a three v two. And now what happens? Because you're not there, um, Soraka gets out, Warwick comes here and ends up cleaning up a kill on GP or something. Or they blow a flash and they kill Blitzcrank or something. So this fight what goes from, would have been a, a complete free dive, goes into nothing. Actually, a, a, a loss. So um, that's a really good habit to get into is use that time between roaming and then just pan your camera mid to see if it's a, a cannon wave. And if it's a cannon wave, it will give you a lot more time. So is that all good? Makes sense? Yeah. Cool. Um, now you put a nice little pink here. I really like this pink ward because you know most likely you're going to be moving onto top side since your bot's getting destroyed and um, Soraka is the most vulnerable side lane to be able to lean onto. Then you get a nice little kill onto this pike. Nice. Nice. And then you come back, clean up a bit of CS and then you recall, I believe, after a wave or two here. So you get a nice little kill onto this Vega with your team. Brilliant. Push this, recall. Uh, like the the leads I get in all my games, like I'm never falling behind, but the leads I get are because like they're just bad mm. and they just give me a free kill rather than me actually exactly to something happen. That that's what I'm saying about what should I say about your gameplay as well? Like because you don't really have a structure to the way you approach your laning phase, there's no there's no it's very hard to replicate what you do. That's why that that's why for me it was a massive thing when I played in my own games. I went when I went from a player like I remember I could get high elo in mid lane for example back in the day by playing, but not that it wasn't because I was really good. It was because everyone else was bad. And nowadays I feel like yeah. I can actually get high win games because I actually understand how to replicate getting the leads. That's how like if on my, if you watch my Twisted Fate, how I got challenged with Twisted Fate, 
it was just a structured process. I understood the matchups. I had an idea about the lane identity. I had, a, I had a, a, a way of something to actually replicate these fundamentals. And this is what I'm trying to, I want to talk about in this video is again, fundamentals with obviously your skill shots, fundamentals with your understanding what you want to do with every wave and with your roaming as well. Like these are just actual ways you can replicate in every single game. This yeah. is what's going to be the big difference. So this is the next thing. And this is a huge skill. When you're coming out of base, a really, really good habit to get into. And it will take time. This is maybe one thing we can talk about after is that you need to be assessing a few things here. Jungle location and support location. You see your jungle basing, you see the support roaming. So what does this mean to me straight away? It says, okay, well, my jungle's basing. I'm very volatile. There's my support. If my support is roaming and I don't see their support, I can assume that their support is also roaming, right? So when you come into lane, you already need to be thinking and processing, oh shit, well, my jungler's not on the map. I know the jungler's somewhere on the bot side. He just showed over this Rift Scuttle. Their support's somewhere roaming as well. I need to be very careful. And then when you walk into lane here, um, you try to get the wave in quickly before, you know, Vega comes or something. And then what do we do? Straight away, bang, Warwick come, ult you, Vega comes, stuns you, or, and you have to blow flash. And actually, I think you die. Yeah, you die on the back end. So, um, that's just a really good ha a habit to get into, um, assessment out of base. Use that time out of base to always constantly assess. And bits of information that can help with this as well is towers. Notice how this tower was dead. That's another piece of information. So it's like, it's like, imagine, you know, like that game Cluedo, you know, when there's like those games where like, it's like a crime, it's like a crime scene and there's like uh. all these clues but you don't know specifically the answer, but you can assume, given all these clues, something is going to happen. And so the clues are the towers, your jungle's location, your support's location, your vision. These are all clues that you can use to kind of deduce. Or de what is that the word? Deduce? Uh, deduce. I don't know. Well, anyway, you can you can use this information to um, to kind of come up with a, a hypothesis. What will actually happen if I walk back to lane? Got it? Yeah. Cool. Uh, here my ADC said it's better for me to stay mid and pressure with Blitzcrank and let her farm side lane. This, yeah. That's... No, yeah. This is what I was literally going to get to. So fast forwarding this game a little bit, you come out of base. This is where the game actually completely booms. And I, I, I think I want you to like take control a little bit more in your games. But in terms of macro, I wanted to talk about this. This is very, very big. <laughs> like... In, in a few minutes, you'll see me spam pinging. Yeah. To go bot lane. Yeah. Because what do we um, see here? I remember here, you get this kill on Twi Trist, which is really good. You get a, I think you get a huge shutdown as well. This is massive. You're actually... Okay. Yeah, you're really big right now. So I remember here, you were walking bot, and then it looks like there was a ping war. This is where you need to override it. It is absolutely crucial that you, you go into the side lane right now. Okay. Yep. Like, let's look at what happens because this, ha because this happens. Let's just look here. What, what should the land of Simon be? It should be you, catch this bot wave, reset, go top, Kaisa goes mid, catches this wave, and then you play mid to top, right? Yeah. That makes sense? Yeah. So what happens? You go mid, Kaisa stays bot, you catch this wave. You should be recalling here with the whole team, by the way. Mm. I feel like. Wait, do I have enough gold for... Yeah, you have loot and gold by far. Oh no, I see. I was waiting for Ludens and Sork Boots in one base. I, 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 is that too greedy? Yeah, it's way too greedy because look at every single person on your team is looking for a reset and you need to fix the lane assignments, right? Because then what happens if you're not basing now, look what happens because of this actually. So you stay for one more wave to get your boots. Kaiser goes straight bot. GP goes straight top because he doesn't know any better, right? GP's just going to go straight top. Yeah. Now when you come, look, you actually stay for this long. And this actually completely screws your team because now your jungler has no, I no idea where to be. Your GP is just going to be mindlessly pushing and your AD carries just farming Krugs. So you're the ma you're the main pressure point of the team right now, you and you and Echo. And now, because you're basing, everyone's ready to pressure. They, they just got their waves. Look, GP's got his wave. Kaiser's got waves. They're looking to pressure. Now things are happening on the map and you're not anywhere near here. And also, the thing to top it off is look at this. Because the lane assignment doesn't get fixed, you go straight back mid, and now you don't get any control in top river. 
because it's always a 4v5. Because GP, again, out of base, what does he do? TP straight top. It doesn't matter if you get a kill here, um, John, because the kill doesn't lead to anything because your AD carry is not in the area. This is why the game turned into a massive fiesta. It's because the whole time, you, ha you can't even walk into river. Yeah. And so this is why, like, and and and, and it, it kind of gets the the and, and literally to highlight it one more time. GP's already died once. He goes top, dies. They chase kills. There's this whole skirmish top side, but wait, should I be going top here? Um, uh... nah, the fight's done. Like, see, see all this, the, and the game's just so hard because we're just constantly fighting while your AD carry is bot. And so, um. I understand that he pinged you off, but you really need to take control of the lane assignments. Like, if you... This is less about mid lane. This is more about climbing solo queue. Is that you... If you see, for example, um, back in the day, like, King, you know, for the place for Cloud9 Academy now, in every single solo queue game with King, he would literally say, "Go, this is everywhere, everyone where to go. Go top, go bot. Like, this person go top, this person go mid. And even if they don't listen, like... Over time, it's right. It's better to say it than not say it. Like, because most of the times people will listen. In my games, anyway, even on at a plat account, people do listen to lane assignment calls. So this actually completely screwed you guys. All right. So what we're gonna do before we finish off this this specific vod, there's what I want to do here is quickly look at two things: a micro thing first, and then a team fight. So this is just the skirmish breaks out on bot here, and then. I, I really don't like these E's, like this. Mm. So what I recommend in any of these skirmishes is that you really want to make it as hard as possible for them to, like, dodge like your E. First and then w. Yeah, like, try and close the gap first. Like, uh, there was an analogy I used to have for this, but it's like when you first Blitzcrank, for example, right? Yeah, you walk up an E first. You just walk up. You just walk up because they're spending time zigzagging that, like, you're going to close the gap. Right now, if you hold your E, you just literally walk at them. Um, keep walking, keep walking. And then, look, he would be against this wall and it'd be so much easier for you to hit this E onto this Tristana. And then, um, anyway, you still kill him, but, like, it's just the principle there behind it. Yeah. And now let's talk about this last team fight. Oh, I don't know if I flashed the Vega cage, if it makes a difference. This fight? I think I should have, yeah. No, no, no. So this fight, this fight is... Okay, there's a few things, but the, 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 listen here. So... You do this fight, what you should be doing, what's the first mistake we're already seeing here? Oh, uh, I'm not zoning. There's no queues on the ground, John. Yeah. You need to be queuing the ground because queue, if you queue this little um, choke point and then you queue up here and maybe where Tristano is, what you're doing is you're both getting, it's two things. You're getting orbs on the ground for your ultimate damage and you're creating threat because there they know you have E, you're, they're scared to walk through. But if you're not putting balls in, it's just, it's, you know, you, you should always be putting balls in fights like this. Your cooldown is so low and then you miss your E. It is what it is. But the main problem is you're not, you're not using enough cues. So what do we see here? Bang, they're out. What's the, what's the call here? Uh, probably should back off since our side lanes are shoving. Well, we should back off, right? Because how are you going to chase into them? GP has no ult. It's so hard for you guys to chase into this. This is exactly what Vega wants. This is not what Syndra wants. You have no... Like, it's so hard for you to walk into the team like this. Your team's just getting zoned and, and completely screwed. Like, Syndra does not want these fights. Your comp doesn't want these fights. You want to play pick, right? You have yeah. Blitzcrank Syndra, and your GP has no ult now. Your Echo... Like, it's so hard for you to walk into a Vega and a Soraka and a Pike like this. Like, I feel like this is a recipe for disaster. And... The reason I wanted to highlight this is because it's similar to um, when you play Tia, for example, is that if you don't call the fights that you want and play the fights that you want, you will get punished. Syndra is an immobile champion that can't really chase anyone because he has no mobility, no gap closer. Syndra needs people, people to walk into her. This is why that's what secured you this dragon. Because no one wants to walk into a Syndra. You can just place your balls everywhere. No one wants to get one shot. Like, that's what is strong about Syndra. Syndra is weak when she has to chase. So that's just something to think about in terms of champ identity, and because that is going to help you take favorable fights. So calling this off, I'll just ping back, 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 and just group mid together, and then do the exact same thing with Baron, John. You bring them into you, they come into you, and then you can look to burst someone, you know? 
Yeah, I think after this team fight, the game was boom. Yeah, the game boom. They just get barren after this team fight. They ace you and get barren. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to go into another VOD and we're going to highlight ex literally some of the exact same, um, some of the same points. So this next VOD is the one versus uh, Victor, I oh. believe. Oh. This one, this Victor game. You end up winning, but it was super sloppy. Yeah. Super sloppy. Do you got any uh, questions Victor, so far? Victor E arranges in Jakura. Yes, it does. Yeah, I didn't know that before I played the lane. But the main point with Victor E, his E level one, I think is on a 14 second cooldown. Your Q is on a four second cooldown. Mm. So that is that was a really big thing. So the first thing here... Um, I, I don't want to talk too much about runes and masteries, but what do we see? You go sorcery secondary here. The reason I disagree so much about sorcery secondary in this specific matchup is think about how the lane's going to play out. So let me give you a quick under, like a quick rundown with um, with how this works. So sorcery it, with Dorans is great for long laning phases where you feel like you're just going to be slow poking. It's going to be a very slow lane because obviously it has mana regen um, because Dorans has mana regen. So you're going to, um, it's really good for extended laning phases. But what is secondary inspiration with Time Up Tonic and Biscuits and Corrupted Pot? What is that better for? It's better for heavy trading, right? Because you can be basing, you can come back, you're going to have your Corrupting Pots refresh, you get a first item Dark Seal, and then you can keep up the pace. Why is, why would that be better against Victor? Um, yeah, he has longer range and he can just poke you more. Ooh, and you have to well, that's one part of it. Is that yeah? Like if you take if you take um, if you play oh. defensively, he can just poke you down slowly. But what's the second I thing? I guess he wants his like bigger purchases for his hex core. Definitely, so that's that's the big you want big one. Bases. Right, like so. If you force him to base for a Dorans or a Boots or an Amplifying Tomb or anything, that is really really good for you because if he's spending gold things that are not upgrading his first hex core. It is absolutely massive. Massive. And it's the exact same for a lot of these matchups. Like, if you're versing Twisted Fate, you force him bef base before Catalyst. You're versing Victor, force him before Hexcore. Versing um, Oriana, force him before Lost Chapter. Any of these champions that really are item-reliant, you need to... And that's the strength of Syndra. You can play the lane however you want. Since, you, since your matchups... Like, Syndra is the ultimate laning champion. But you need to have a plan. Right? Yep. You need to have a plan. And, and what is the first thing in terms of the, not just the 1v1, obviously the 1v1, we've kind of identified how you want to play it. The second thing, you're versing a Shivana. This is the ultimate Syndra game. There's no gank threat. You're versing a slow mid laner. This game is completely in your control, in my opinion. So there's the things yeah. you need to be assessing when going into the game, and that will help you determine your runes as well. So when, um, let's go back just a touch here. When you're versing any champion that outranges you, a Nivea, um, Zareth, Velkos, Victor, Azir, Vag even Vega, any of these champions, you need to get a minion advantage because you need them because if they ever have an minion advantage, they don't have to worry about using abilities on the wave. They can just focus on you. You need to make them make a choice. That's what's going to give you defense, right? Yep. So look at this. So you, you auto attack the minion once. You get a nice little Q. But you're not, you're just matching auto attacks with him. You haven't got any form of minion advantage at the moment. And right now, um, he can just, and right this, look at this. So this is the first thing here. So first thing we've established, you're not getting an immediate advantage. But secondly, don't be afraid to trade like Q for E. Because if he uses E once, 12 second cooldown level one, your Q is four second cooldown. So if you have... I kept, I kept trying to dodge it, but I didn't... Like, I couldn't dodge any of them, I think. Yeah, so that's... We'll get to that. We'll, we'll get to that. But um, the main thing I'm seeing is that if he is, then you should just Q him and then Q him again and then Q him again. And it, you can literally get three Qs for every E, level one. And, you know, that's something you need to abuse. And this is for all matchups. Any matchup where they have very long cooldowns, you need to abuse it. And by the way, with your dodging patterns, notice, look at this. Notice how you, look how you're going back and forward. You very, you very, you don't go side to side very often. So versus any of these skillshot champions, you need to be dodging side to side. It's the exact same in bot lane when you're versing an Ezreal. You never want to go front to back. You want to go side to side. That's the first thing. Oh, uh, yeah. 
So anyway, all right, let's go back a bit. I've, I've kind of skipped too far forward here. So here, this is fine. You should be dodging side to side. You know that Victor, okay, two things we see here. We know that Victor knows that you're going to want to go for this low minion, right? Yeah. So he sees that you're walking up to go for this minion. So what does this mean? A lot of t a lot of the time, either two things are going to happen. You're going to completely um, miss this minion and focus him instead of the minion, just trade Q for E. Or you can miss this minion, pretend you're going to go for it, and then dodge upwards randomly or dodge downwards randomly. And then you're just going to completely dodge the E. Then you can play aggressively. But look at this. You just go for the, the minion you know, complete blindly and just take an E to the face and then you miss your Q. So that's the first thing. Anyways, look at that. You used two Qs. He used one there and you got a nice little auto attack. That was good. Anyway, you auto attacking, auto attacking. You get hit by it again. See how you're walking backwards? Yeah. It's so much easier for him to get poke off when you walk backwards like that. You get a Q back. Yeah, you're just walking and, and notice like whenever he uses E, you still play scared. Like, you don't need to play scared. Like, you out-trade his Q. If you QE him, you know, after he uses E, you just QE him if he wants to take that other trade. And you're know, walking backwards again and again. Um, okay. Another thing here. What do we talk about in terms of lane? What you What's your intention with the wave? You want to ideally slow build a wave into him because the bigger the wave, it's going to give you more time to either be in the river for a river skirmish. It's either going to give you time to reset quickly or it's going to allow you to give you time to poke under tower, right? So what does that mean? That means you should be looking to position outside the wave, right? Because okay. if you stand next to the wave, he's going to be able to simultaneously hit you and the wave. Like, like this, look what you do here. You stand directly behind the minions. He ease through all the minions and it hits you. And you walk backwards at the same time, so you can't trade back onto him. So you've done simultaneously three things wrong there. You've standing behind the minions, you're not standing outside the minions, you walk backwards instead of dodging sidewards, and you're not trading when he trades onto you with E, you should be trading forwards QE back onto him. Yeah. All right. So anyway, let's fast forwarding this a little bit here. You kind of you kind of get where I'm coming from now in terms of the early landing phase and why this was a little bit, this was so rough for you. And this is fine. This is a very, very common thing. This is more about just understanding the matchups. And like, trust me, it'll be so much easier next time you go into the into a game when you play this matchup, when you implement this stuff. So look at that. Already, that one little time, you did have the minion advantage. You get a nice little trade-off. And I love how you get vision here because you know most likely there's going to be a scuttle fight, right? At th around 3 minutes 15, um, given your jungler's part topside. So this is a nice little good, uh, nice ward. And I love how you stay here and you don't recall because it's really good to, to kind of not base until um, the scuttles are secured. Yeah. And then the wave's coming back out to you, which is really good because now you know you didn't do the same mistake as last game, right? Last game, you were just hitting the wave and the kind of keeping yeah. it outside his tower. But this, this game, you actually let it come out and then you actually ping mid here. You ping mid here. Um, to go for a gank, you ping and you give an exclamation mark in this bush saying it's watered, I'm assuming. And then, the thingy. yeah, if you don't have the bind, but then you get a nice little, you blow his flash and you get a nice little kill here. Beautiful. So uh, apart from the, that first little two minutes after that, it, or three minutes, sorry, the next 45 seconds were good. So then you come back. What do I recommend in any of these skill shot oriented matchups is boots. I love going Ideally, boots. I'd have corrupting and then base on base after the fifth wave and get crafting and boots yeah that would be nice that would be beautiful and there'd be a cannon wave yeah that would be is, this the, is this the sixth wave or is i think, this, I think it's the sixth wave i think it's the sixth wave yeah because yeah but the problem is here is that now you've come back you've bought a, a revealable which is fine given you've gone this tree but you haven't got any boots. I feel like boots is so valuable versus Victor and allows you to tether. It allows you to close the gap and it, and it allows you to um, dodge his ease a lot easier. All right. So what do we got? Let me just look at my notes. Sorry. Okay. So you come back to lane. Um, it's pushing back to you, which is completely fine because your jungler's um, got double scuttle. He's super far ahead. Now he's clearing. He wants to do probably a full clear and look to reset, right? So that's also yeah. something you need to be thinking about when you're coming out of base. Don't just mindlessly look at your phone or check Facebook or whatever. Like you really assess the map here. What do we see? Bots reset. Your jungler's still on the map. Just got double scuttle. And you know, as a jungler, since you're 
you, this is actually a huge advantage, by the way, you being a jungler swapping to mid, it's because you understand everything about jungle. So you're going to be able to assess, well, yeah, it's very obvious. Kha'Zix is not really going to be wanting to look for a gank at the moment. He wants to clear his camps and resource. He, he probably has a shit ton of gold already. Look, he has 1,100 gold. He's killing it. So it's fine, completely fine to let this wave just crash into you right now. And, and um, you know, there's no point um, trading back onto him or anything. It's just let, it's fine to just let this wave come into you. And you get a nice little ward here. I think that way, I think that ward is, isn't really necessary yet because you're getting pushed in at the moment yeah. and your, and your jungle is resetting. Like I don't see this ward actually doing anything like this doesn't have, it doesn't change the way the lane plays out. If that makes sense. Like wards, if you think of wards, John, wards should always directly affect how you play the lane. If a ward doesn't affect how either your lane is or you play the lane, it's probably a bad ward. It's a good way to think about it. Yeah. Anyway, there's no point in you taking that last E there. Just let it come into you. It's completely fine. Now, this is an absolutely crucial moment in the game right now. Bang. Five minutes. So, this wave's crashed. Your jungler's heading back onto his top side and raptors. This is extremely important. You need to set the intention with what you're doing. Because if now, if you just autopilot now, it will turn to shit. So, what do we know? Let's look at the information, like if we're doing it in a crime scene or whatever. We see the clues. We see two scuttles. You've got a ward here. We see Victor come back. His itemization, he's actually gone for double Dorans because he died early, which is exceptional for you. You have you don't have any pink wards and you don't have lost chapter. You and we see Kazix wanting to probably get raptors, maybe Krugs, and reset. What's the other piece of information here? You don't have Ignite. So a massive mistake when I coach people, John, is that they don't play differently when they have Ignite. So if you were to extend this laning phase and potentially look to all in at six without Ignite and fail that kill, that is massively bad. Like, Syndra needs to be playing around her Ignite cooldown because it's literally the difference between getting a solo kill and not. So given all this information, you have two options, right? You can either heavy trade, slow build a wave and reset for your lost chapter, or... You can play slow, don't take much damage, chill out a little bit, and wait for your jungler to come back on the map and then and then look to do something. And what happens is that you don't for the, for the next like minute or two, you don't actually have an intention. You kind of just let me get my notes up here. Sorry. Ease to the face. Well, you take ease. You don't trade back onto him. And why this is important, John, as well, is that if you have an intention, it's going to dictate what you do with the wave. And it's going to dictate also the positioning of your character. Let's just say you wanted to play safe and let the wave come into you and chill for a little bit. You wouldn't be standing outside the wave, right? You'd be standing behind the wave because it's going to it's gonna naturally push into you if he ease you. So, um, yeah, that's... That's... Um, that's really, really interesting. That's very, very important here. Let me, one sec, I got my notes here. So when you go, oh yeah. So when you go for a minion like this, I actually use this as an example. You're not moving to side to side. So this minion here, look at this. So you, I think it's, this, or maybe it's this next minion. So you get this minion and then you kind of, you don't move side to side. You're just constantly going back. So just highlighting again, you just not going backwards. Anyway, so how you play this, it doesn't make sense. Are you playing to push, um, like hard push, heavy trade and look to reset for your lost chapter? Are you looking to play safe? Like, I didn't, I didn't when I watched this, I, I didn't know what you were trying to do. And then look what happens because of this. You're chilling, you're chilling. I don't know if you're slow pushing or not. You're kind of just using your abilities on the wave and then you just re you build a wave and then you just reset, which is fine, which is a fine play, but why not heavy trade onto him? He's got a health pot you can burn. And you're going to have a really good reset onto him. There's no reason why you shouldn't just be heavy trading onto him at the first place. Is that, is, is that yeah. you got, kind of get that? Yeah. So then you base, which is fine. This is a, a brilliant strategy, but you should have already decided this a minute ago. Like you should already know what you wanted to do. Um, so you base, you get your lost chapter, you get a pink ward. You're, you're absolutely popping right now. So this is much better. So what do we see? Your jungler starts dragon straight away. So what does that mean for you? Your Syndra instantly passed to this path to this dragon. Sorry. And why is that? As any immobile mage, you never want to be coming late to a fight. You all, unless, because if you're playing Fizz or Talon or something, it's it's better for you to come late to a fight because then you could, you, you, you know, Victor's going to be walking into this river, then you could potentially get on the flank, you know, from here. But if you're Syndra, 
your jungler's on the, the dragon. You don't want to be coming in from the flank because if they show, if they're out of vision in here, you don't know what they're going to do. You don't know if they're turning on you or trying to kill this Kha'Zix. So you path mid first and then you walk through river and then you get chunked and because you're trying to help your jungler. And so if you were to walk through here earlier, you would have got here before Victor. It just would have been Shivana. Then you would have been grouped with your team. You wouldn't have got chunked and it would have been able to secure a dragon because you're super scary to walk into as well, right? Because remember we established before, if Syndra gets to a fight first, puts a Q onto the ground, no one wants to get near you because no one wants to get comboed, right? Yeah. So that, you got that? Oh, I was just like, I think I was thinking that I wanted to get mid prior first. That's why I walked to mid and then I realized that they were like fighting sooner than I thought. Gotcha. Makes sense. Uh, in hindsight, it's bad though. Yeah. I think it's just a good habit to get into given it's already this low. Like, I don't think priority matters, by the way. When Like, priority doesn't matter if the dragon's already started. Yeah. Like, if, if this dragon hadn't been started yet, let's just say Kha'Zix was still bot or in his jungle, I think going mid is 100% the correct play. Because then, then they have to make a choice, right? They have to make a choice between the wave mid or responding to dragon. But, like, now, like, it's already started. There is no choice. They have to go to the dragon. That's why the wave thing doesn't make as much sense. But, but yeah, I see your point. I should have queued the bash as well before I walked in. Yeah, that'd be also better. But still, you still get chunked anyway, regardless. But still. Anyway, so you come back. Right now, you need to assess this situation. So you need to recall badly. You've used both your pots. And why you need to recall is because you need to be in a position to be able to all in this victor. You shouldn't be staying unhealthy in a, in a wave as Syndra ever. So you let this come in. It's completely fine. The next wave is a cannon. You can use this to kind of ride it out. I'll trade my HP for the wave and just look for another reset here. It's completely fine. Like he can't, he can't stop you from getting this wave in and recalling. Like if you just W Q this wave, hold your E for a little bit. Um, given Shivana doesn't have much kill threat anyway, there's no reason to use your use your combo like this. And again, like if you're not looking to completely all in and and commit to the all in, like this is a massive problem I actually see with a lot of Syndra players when I've coached as well, or just players in general, is that. They do these half ass attempts, where I, and I never recommend doing these these trades like that, by the way, starting with E without going for the Q first, because you're very rarely going to have enough damage, um, and then you just fail the all-in. And now you don't have ultimate, and... Um, what yeah. do you mean, not starting out with E? So, like, what I mean is, like, I think the trades that I would do, if, if, if I look for an all-in, I generally look for an all-in if, like, he gets too close, I land a Q first on him, then E. Because but if you, because if, if you, you, if you do like this, you get an extra ball, don't you? Because you have the ball on the ground. No, no, no. You queue first. The ball's still on the ground by the time you combo anyway. But because if you a first, you can get another queue on them anyways. Right. The, the well, the main reason is I just don't see, like, okay. Well, like I think the reason why I feel like I do that is because when I hit the queue first. Maybe the way I do it in my mind is like I Q, I hit it once, and maybe that means like for me it's signaling that like he's getting chunked, and then maybe I Q E or something like that again. Like I don't know, because I just never see myself doing these sorts of trades like Eing and then doing a full combo and hundred to zeroing like this. Like I don't know, maybe it's wrong. Though. Maybe I'm wrong in saying that. I just feel like there's no kill threat, you know, like unless like you're fully committing yeah, for an all in. I don't think I can kill him here, but the. The combo where you E the ball on the ground does more damage, I'm pretty sure. Because you get... Get a second Q on the back end. Yeah. yeah, I guess that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, Alright, so... Wait, no, no, no. no. I think the reason... Okay, I think the reason I say Q first... Okay, actually, thinking about it one more time. So, when I Q first, right? It's like three... You get... You can get... Um, it's still the same amount of Qs. Because think about this, the way I do it, I don't QE straight away. I Q once, right? So I'd Q once, chill a little bit, then E, and then do the com, and then, you know what I mean? Then Q, W, R. So then you have two balls on the ground. Uh, Does that make sense? Yeah. So you Q, chill a little bit, wait for your Q, like to maybe one more second on your Q, then E, then W, QR, you know? 
Yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean. Sorry. Yeah. It's because you would actually have another ball on the ground. Instead of five, you would have probably six, I'm assuming. Anyway. But yeah, the point is, is if you're not going to be able to ult um, all in and go for a kill, it's it's kind of rough because now your kill threat's completely gone. Now he's just going to reset. And now you're stuck in this extended laning phase where you're just going to have to reset as well. Like, yeah, you might deny him a wave, but I feel like this is not abusing, the, abusing this matchup as much as I would like. And now what happens, um, because you um, stay in the lane like this, I just... I, I really don't like staying in extended laning phases like this unless you're committing to stay for a long period of time. You don't have any pinks. You have no R. Um, you have no wards. Unless you're committing to stay and look for a roam onto a side lane or something, I would be just be looking to, re uh, looking to recall. But staying like this doesn't really achieve anything. I mean, you get a ward, but like, you notice how like it doesn't really achieve anything. You're not able to kind of push your lead, yeah. if that makes sense. So like when I when I lane on Syndra, I'm always thinking, what 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 am I actually trying to achieve here? Am I trying to kill this guy? Am I trying to roam? Am I trying to play to push and move? Am I trying to kill the jungler? What am I actually trying to do? Or am I just playing for priority so we can get an objective? Once you fail this kill, in my mind, it's like, okay, cool. If I get this wave in, I'm gonna get a really good tempo base on Victor. Come out of come out of base, get my control, rinse, repeat with full HP, pink wards, etc., and spend a bit of my gold. Like you had six hundred gold, maybe maybe get an amp two more or a dark seal or something. But when you stay like this, it just feels like it's low pressure, and yeah, you're not really achieving much. But anyway, so it's not a complete big deal. Now, you base, oh, you mean so you die, you trade one for one, you come back, you get your blasting one. Still haven't got boots yet, which I think is a little bit of a mistake. So now look at this. So you get the wave in. This is beautiful. You shove it in. Nice, nice, nice. Now look at this. You duck out of vision. Let's, look, let's put on their vision. Why are you not just constantly out of vision? Look at this. So Victor stays. And now look, they're pinging, like shitting themselves. Like, oh shit, they're roaming, they're roaming. And then you just show mid here. Look, bang. You're just sitting in, in mid wave. A really good habit to get into this is similar to that hover thing. Even if you don't see kill threat bot, it's a really good habit to, to just lean. And let's just say you were scared about their jungler. Lean onto the top side where your jungler side on. Like generally, I have a, my default response is lean onto the side where my jungler is because then if a jungle skirmish breaks out, you're going to be there first. And then also you can 2v1 dive someone. But in this specific case, you've got your pink ward on this bot side. If you lean out of vision here, Syndra doesn't, I mean, Shivana doesn't have threat onto you. You can just lead and just scare them bot. And then you actually do scare, scare them bot. But you're not... See how you're not actually committing? You're just kind of chilling in the middle here. You eventually show. But if a fight were to break out bot and you're, hov you're halfway hovered, you know, who knows what can happen? You know, maybe you can counter gank the Shivana if he goes bot or something. Yeah. All right. So now, next thing. And this is a, and this is a topic that I actually had to teach um, Chippies. Chippy's had this massive problem um, in pro play. So look at this. Your jungler went top and killed top. Now look what he's doing. He started Rift Herald. Right now, it's it's a really bad habit to get into is looking for these types of trades when your jungler is doing Rift Herald. And you know that from a jungler's perspective. If a fight breaks out mid and their jungler comes mid, he doesn't want to stop his Rift Herald and come to come to help you. So whenever I see this, when I see my jungler start a dragon or start a um, a Rift Herald, what I want to do is either just play for the wave or, yes, I can all in them and take a really, really good trade as long as I'm not trading my HP, as long as I'm healthy and they can't gank me and they can't pressure me. So I like this trade, this EQ. If you thought that, if you thought he couldn't trade back onto you, then yes, this is fine. But given like you can't really go for this trade without doing that and you trade, he puts his ultimate on you. It's actually invisible, the ultimate yeah. and you trade this insane HP. I, I get pissed off if I'm the jungler and you would know that, right? Yeah. So this is a, another little concept to think about. Um, always play for your, like when, and when you're playing for objectives, you got to play for your jungler. Now, um, all right. Uh, I don't know how much time we have left. Can you quickly go over the one against the Kiana? Um, I, I've actually kind of... 
I didn't actually go over that Kiana one because I don't think it's a good example of a VOD to to go over. What do I actually do? Wait, how much time do we have left? It's been like an hour. It doesn't really matter. I, there's actually one more VOD I want to quickly show you. Another one. Because I, I kind of want to highlight the most important points for something that we can improve on. Because the reason I looked at this, I looked at this Kiana one, right? Where is it? This one, this one here you're talking about, right? Yeah. Like, I think this game is, it's a loss at draft. In my opinion. Like, I don't see how, I don't see how you can win this game. Like, it's a bad, like for me as a Syndra player, like, you can't punish this Kiana in lane. Because of the jungle matchup. And then your bot lane is a losing 2v2. And your top lane is losing 1v1. You have three losing lanes, pretty much. Or two losing lanes. Even though you win 1v1, there's too much threat onto you to be able to play aggressively. Like, I feel like we can go over this VOD, but I don't feel like you're going to get much from it. I feel like there's a lot more to take from um, this VOD over here. This one here. This is this last one I want to go over with you. So, so far... Um, the things that I've kind of identified is that, and the biggest things is obviously the, the part of your micro is we want to be looking to improve your trading when he goes up for CS. That's one thing we want to be also. And the next thing is the having an, a purpose and intention with every single wave. A lot of the time in your games, you're getting leads, like you said, not because of things you're doing really well, but because they're messing up. And I feel like without having an intention with your waves, um, and kind of knowing what you're doing at every point in the lane, given the identity of Syndra and what you want to be doing on Syndra, it's going to be hard to replicate and you're going to find it really hard to climb. So the reason I'm doing, I, um, the reason I wanted to quickly go over the first two or three minutes of this lane is because I feel like it kind of highlights your problem with the mic, the first micro. So you get this queue off and what do we see with Mal's versus Syndra? His E is on a 14 second cooldown you hard out range Malzahar. Your range of your Q is insane. It's like a 900 range. It's cooldown is longer, is shorter, and the range is um, insanely high. So you can pretty much tether him at all points of this game if you tether correctly. So you pop his shield, level one, with the Q. And then you walk up, and you get it. You, see how you're not tethering your, your character correctly here? There's no, there's no reason as to why he should be looking to be even able to either auto attack um you or or even get his e onto you there's there's no reason and the other thing i actually missed here sorry there's one other thing let's look at this minion this minion here so look at these minions here that um malzahar is going to walk up for given that you use your q on the minions if your q is actually coming up you know malzahar is going to be looking to last hit this minion time your q just be patient. Time your queue for when he walks up to those minions. And, and there's no counterplay. He can't do anything. He has to have to give the minions or take a queue to the face. Like, there's no there's no counterplay. And then here, again, Malzahar's walking up to auto-attack this minion. Look at this. He walks up, auto-attacks that minion, and then you don't put a queue onto him. And then you walk up, you get that queue on the backhand, it's okay. But again, you're not you're not um, abusing the fact that his E is on a 14 second cooldown. You're not abusing the fact that he has to walk up and see us. So every single time you're queuing, it hasn't been, and that was the first good trade. That was actually for a minion. And then you proc your electrocute auto attack, bang, you walk back. And here, 224, I think here, bang, you should be looking up to, to queue. You should be queuing him again. Did I have corrupting or Jones this game? This was corrupting. Which I think is correct, because you can absolutely just abuse the fuck out of Malzahar. I think I should have Ignite do right? Yeah, 100% go Ignite. TP's useless. I never take... You should never take TP on Syndra, ever, by the way. It's I see a lot of Koreans go TP into these matchups. I don't know. I don't think... Like, I've watched a lot... I've watched a lot of... um, What's his name? There's one Syndra player that plays at a shit time. Um, what's his name? <sighs> There's one LZK player that plays a lot. And he always... And I've watched so many VODs where he versus Dopa, Syndra versus Oriana. Oh, uh, BDD. Yeah, BDD. Yeah, BDD. And, like... Like, I feel like when he takes Teleport, like, I watch the game and I'm like, what's the point in picking Syndra? Like, I just... I don't feel like there's any point in picking Syndra if you have to take Teleport. Let's just say you take Ignite and you take... This... Malzahar takes Teleport. 
it w- it won't matter that he has TP advantage because he can't abuse it because you're going to blow his TP so early that you're just going to have Ignite for free and he's going to have no second summoner. It's not like he's going to be able to push you in and get a reset ever. You're always going to be able to push the wave and reset whenever you want. I can maybe see it in Korea because the junglers will be so good that they can like, that will stop you from abusing Syndra's early strength. But I mean, I have not seen a game where I've played in Syndra in high elo where like I would ever need TP. Maybe you can take it in an Orianna matchup or something, but even then it's like, well, you're just going to lose the game. I just feel like you're still going to lose the game. And BDD always does. Lo- he loses most games versus Dopa because Dopa, you know, if he go trades TP for TP, you just get outscaled. Anyway, you're leaning on the correct side. This is really good. And it's just the same thing here. Like, every single time he's walking up, he's just getting free auto attacks, basically. Anyway, you... And then you respond to this. is really good. You flash QE. Brilliant. You get a nice little oh, kill. Yeah, yeah, and then you get your base stopped, which is pretty shitty. Um, I think... Should I have this gone shame that death? No, nah, I think you have TP. Like, I think... Yeah. Given you have TP, I think basing there is beautiful. Then you can come back, just TP straight back mid. And then you come back mid... And then you um, get kind of chunked. And what I wanted to highlight here was when you should have based. Yeah. Right. Why don't you just base right here? Good. I thought their wave wouldn't crash. But it doesn't matter. You Does have teleport. It not matter? You have teleport. I guess. Uh, and 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 even if, if I TP back on the minion, what happens with job and? No, I'll just TP to the tower, hundred percent. Because you have a ward. You just. So what happens? You base right now. You might miss two or three creeps, but I feel like you staying here just puts yourself in a, such a bad position. And because Jarvan actually misplays, look what happens here. This is a perfect example of what happens in your games. You stay here in an extended laning phase where you you actually have corrupting pot. You need to push the pace of the game. Even if if Malzaha, even if and like and then Jarvan goes for a double scuttle, even though his top has no priority. He has no priority mid, and Lee Sin's coming back on the map and just ints and dies and gives you a kill. Like, this wasn't because of anything that you did well. In my opinion, like, what would happen... Like, even if you want to stay here and try and get the wave in, like, if he freezes it there, he can freeze if he wants to. You can't unfreeze it anyway. Because think about it. Like you said, Jarvan's going to be in the area, and yes, if you ward and hover... I don't even think it's going to be enough because it's so deep in the in the lane and you don't have flash. But the main reason, I think, as well, is like, okay, let's say he freezes. Let's say hypothetically he freezes. He can't freeze for long. You come back, you buy an item, you maybe buy a pink as well. You can pink one side and then deep ward one side. Like, you're not going to be able to unfreeze straight away anyway. You're going to have to wait for this lease in regardless, in my opinion. Or... Or ward on the bot side or the ward that you the side that you think Jarvan's gonna come and then just like yeah, I am not sure. I just I just feel real I just felt really wrong to just stay here, in my opinion. Yeah, I think I lose way too much tempo every game. Yeah, like, you do. Basement. You do, you do there's a lot of tempo, I agree. And then like you stay and then you don't TP again and you just kinda hold your TP this whole game. Like, I feel like you should just use it to get back on the map and do things. Like, you hold your TP a lot. But this is why I also don't like TP on Syndra. All right, so we'll hold it there. But what I want to do is... I want to kind of round this out and summarize a few of the th- like few things moving forward. So, after everything we've covered, looking over my notes, there's a lot, I guess, in terms of... A lot we went over in these games. And the reason I, I chose these games, John is because I think that, especially versus versus Victor, when you play Syndra versus Victor, when you play Syndra versus Vega, and Malzahar, all these, these are all champions where it should be free wins. And because they weren't free wins, for me, when I saw the match history, and I'm like, wait, you versed a, I clicked on this match history, I'm like, you versed a Vega, and then you versed a, 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 um, Victor, and then over here, you also versed a Malz. And all these three games, your scoreline wasn't that good, and you're dying a lot, and there were two losses and one win. And that said to me, well, most likely means, and the main problem when I see this generally is when I see a match history like this is, it's not, it's not usually, a, for you especially, it's not a matter of mechanics. It's a matter of 
um, lane intention, knowing what you want to do with most waves, because you can destroy these matchups if you have an idea with what you want to do with the waves. So I think from now on, and this is, I want this to be your step one, your only thing that you focus on out of everything, actually two things, sorry, because the other one's quite small. The first one is the micro one. Try and CS, time your to your cues or time your abilities and try and take into account the enemy, the, the minion he's going to go um, farm for and time your abilities with that. That's the first thing, all right? I want you to make a note of this. That's the first thing I want you to focus on. And that wouldn't be too hard because I'm, I'm sure you said that you've done that before. The main thing, I want you to come into every game. Every wave, you need to have an idea of what you're doing. And let's just say, you, you might say, Curtis, I actually don't know. I actually don't know what, what I want to do with this wave. Have a guess. It's like a science experiment, right? If you come into a science experiment and you don't even have a hypothesis, you're just kind of, there's nothing you can actually learn from it, if that makes sense. You're just going to go in again and you're going to see something happen. And you're like, wait, why did that happen? I mean, I don't know. I, I couldn't even test my hypothesis, so I'm not going to learn. You need to have a hypothesis to test in the first place. Yep. Got it? So every single wave and, and what I'll do in this video on this, I'll post it up and you can actually rewatch this and try and, um, look to all the time, the things where I said, I paused it and said, you don't have, there's no intention with the wave here or like, I, I, I didn't see what you were doing. And, um, it'll really, really help you because your first 10 minutes of the game every single time is really random and really rough. Do you feel that when you play Syndra? Yeah. Like it, it's it's like it's so random. Like every game turns out so different. It's like yeah. Uh, like normally, I just I feel like just nothing. I don't like. I know what to do. It's just I can't implement it in the early game, and then I just get free kills with my mm. ult because they're really bad. Mm. Do you think that after today's session that you kind of have an idea about steps moving forward? Yeah. I think that was really helpful. I wrote down so much. Awesome. So if you have any questions about what I asked or what we covered today, just feel free to message me on Discord and I'll, you know, every any questions about our session, just yeah, chuck me a message, right? Yep. Um can I ask you about like champ picks after? Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, you ask me now. Yeah, what what do you Yeah. Well, um I wanted to learn another mage, like a scaling mage, but I don't know if I should learn like Oriana or Rise or Cassio. I'm like out of those three, I don't know which one. All right, so I get a lot of questions all the time about shampoo, and this is the way I view it. If you look at the the best players, like you you watch a lot of vods, Rise is a champion that always exists. Every laner in in high elo, if you if you're serious about mid lane, they always play Rise. It has to be in your pool. Like Rise is a champion that it just comes in and out of meta constantly. And it is, is, it is a champion that is hard to learn because it's so low range, but it is ex insanely rewarding when you do learn it. I think at the moment, it is actually quite weak in the meta. The other champ you said was Cassio and Ori. So Oriana is, it's kind of like, it's one of those champions that, is, again, is a very competitive pick, but in solo queue, it, it, it okay. It requires, you know what we spoke about today, having a lane identity or having an intention with your wave. It is yeah. that to the extreme. If you don't have an intention with every single wave, you'll get fucked because yeah. it's the exact same. You're in a mobile mage who needs to scale, but has the ability to poke, but because he's so mobile and needs to scale up, you can't fuck up. If you die once, you're just useless. And then Cassio, on the other hand, Cassio is one of those champs that works better in solo queue because people are just bad at versing Miasma. Like, I think people are really bad at versing Miasma. I think it should get punished a lot more than it does in solo queue. Like, when you verse, say, for example, if you get counterpicked by a Victor or a Syndra, it can be, like, really, really hard. So, all of them are good. All of them are bread and butter. Like, you need to have your pool eventually. Like, I think given that you already have Syndra, well, given that you already have Syndra, which is very similar to Ori... I would honestly switch it up and and probably pick up Cassio. Like right now, I have no intentions for comp for like at least another year because I have school. Right. So I'm just trying to learn like fundamentals for mid lane. Okay. 
well, you know what? Let's 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 add in Casio next, right? Yep. And what we'll do? I have, I have like Fizz, Talon, Syndra, LeBlanc. Oh, brilliant! Well, Casio makes a lot of sense then. So let's add Casio next. I think Rise will be the the final piece of the puzzle. If you if you had all those champs, you'd be set. I think you've now got Syndra, which is and Fizz, which are you know really blindable. Even Talon to a certain extent, if you have AP Mage, I mean AP Jungler, like all those champions are really great for solo queue. I think Casio would be an awesome pick to add into your pool, because from a competitive standpoint, eventually you're gonna need it. But also, since it takes so, it's a bit of a scaling champ. You need you and you need to implement what I learned today. What you learned today, which was how to identify what you want to do with every wave, having a lane, having an identity, having an intention with your wave. So that is something you will you need to have with Casio as well. Otherwise you'll get punished hardcore. What I recommend is, yeah, continue with, what I would actually recommend is don't learn Casio yet until you've actually been able to implement what I've learned in this, what you've learned in this session with Syndra. Once you feel confident with being able to create a hypothesis about what you want to do with every wave and actually have a plan and execute on it, because Syndra is such a great champion for actually doing that. Like it actually teaches you that that fundamental really, really well. Then I would, once you've got that down pat, then I would pick up Cassio. Because then it will be so much easier to pick up Cassio. Because then you're like, what? Wait, given, and you watch my Cassiopeia video on, on YouTube, given that I want Tia, what do I want to do with the wave? And and then given that, once you have that mindset, that that dialogue in your mind, things are going to be a lot easier. And until you have that, it won't, Cassio, you'll just find Cassio very hard. Especially since you're already kind of in semi-high elo, like you're already in plat one. Given you implement this stuff, you're going to be diamond, low diamond easily. Diamond. I've been playing like D2 MMR because yeah. you can't lose masters last year. Yeah, so learning learning Casio would be so hard until you um it would be so hard until you you kind of get down these fundamentals of of Syndra. So um yeah, I think um yeah, I think that's good. Yeah, cool. I might do. I'm gonna try and implement this a bit. I'll probably do another session in a bit so maybe mm -hmm. a month or two mm, sounds good yeah um i think yeah i think it will take a while to i think this these things that we mentioned in this video if you were to look back it would definitely take you a month at least to even like start to scrape the surface of doing this because it will feel so foreign to you to make this a habit um and, and even all those little things that we spoke about in this video remember like we're coming out of base and assessing all the clues about like the kill threat onto you since you're playing such a mobile champions like Syndra and eventually Cassio, like that stuff needs to be ingrained in you. Otherwise you're just going to int <laughs> yeah. straight up. Um, cool. So yeah, sounds good. We can organize another session a month or two and, um, and thanks for the session, John. All right. Yeah, thanks. Awesome. Thanks man. Yeah. And remember, make sure to message me if you have any questions. Yeah. Cool. Have a okay. good one. Bye.